Hey guys, what's up? Today I want to talk about Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. I finally finished this in January and I just want to talk about it. Now, this is going to be a spoiler free review for the first part and then a spoilery chat near the end. So if you don't want spoilers, just watch the first half of this video. When we get to it, I will let you know to click off, find another video to watch because we're going to get into some, some spoilers, but the book was written in the 90s. So if you want, I don't mind. I always say that I like to go in blind to books, but I still don't mind spoilers. I'm just weird like that. I don't know. Like movies, especially spoils, spoilers don't bother me. So take that as you will. But yeah, so let's talk about what I thought about Eye of the World, the first in the Wheel of Time series. I gave this book a five out of five stars. I adored it. We'll just start there. I loved it. It was fun. It was a beautiful world. Amazing characters. If you don't know what this book is about, it is this ragtag group of boys from this farming town and they are swooped up and taken on this quest along with a girl from their town and these magical woman named Moraine and her warder named Lan and the three boys are Rand, Matt, and Perrin and they're taken on this quest basically like out of their town to find out why things of the dark are chasing them. There's Trollocs and Halfmen and Fades and they are all of the dark one and no one knows why they are targeting these three boys. So, Moraine, who is what they call an Aes Sedai, who is a magic, a woman who can channel magic in their world. She has come to find the boys and take them to basically figure out what the fuck is going on. <laughs> and when they leave to go on their journey, Egwene, who is one of the girls from the villages, just decides that it would be fun to tag along. I have no idea why. But she, Egwene's like, I'm going to, and they were at the point where, well, it's not, well, we can't stop you, it's too late, so come on, come with us. And I mean, a lot of this story is travel, so they're traveling, they meet up with another person that had followed them from the village, whose name is Nynaeve, she is their wisdom, which is kind of like, like a medicine man, like a healer, and... They still don't know why these boys are being chased, but no one really trusts Moraine, who is the Aes Sedai, because everyone in this world pretty much looks at magic as evil and of the Dark One, of all magic, even though Moraine keeps saying, like, she's good, like, the Aes Sedai are not evil, you know, the female magic channeling is not evil. And then we kind of learn that men cannot channel. And men that can channel or perform magic in their world go mad. So they are hunted by the women, the Aes Sedai, and either killed or what they call gentled, which means they're cut off from the magic source. But everyone thinks that magic is like this terrible, awful thing, and she has to hide that she's an Aes Sedai, like in a lot of the cities that they come to. And it's just a good old time, and you learn a lot in the first book. It's very, it's traveling story. Like, you go from small town to, like, big city to magical battles, and it's just beautiful, and I love it. One thing I will say, and this isn't really a pro or a con. I mean, I guess it depends on how you look at it. For me, it's not a negative. It's positive. It is obviously very inspired by Fellowship of the Ring. And probably the first third of the book is a, a very obvious Lord of the Rings. Like, Edmund's Field reminds me of, like, the Shire. And Moraine is clearly your Gandalf character. 
and the boys are clearly your hobbits and it's just it's obvious but it's Robert Jordan took his inspiration and yes you can definitely see it but he made it his own like he took that inspiration from Lord of the Rings and really used it and utilized it and made it his own and created this fantastical world all of his own and I think it's just in this first book that you can see that inspiration as I've heard that going forward it's not really there as much but it's just in the first book but I loved it I like I said I gave this book five out of five stars I would highly recommend anybody read it pick it up if you like fantasy pick this up I will go into my two pros and my two cons that I have written down for this book that I kind of noticed when I was reading because everything nothing's perfect even my five star books I can find a con in them I just really enjoyed it so much that it wasn't a big deal so for the con for this book I'm gonna go with the pacing and it seems to be a common con that people have because it starts it'll be like big bang and it'll start out and you'll have these chapters of just so much and then you'll have a slowdown where it takes a little bit and it takes a while to get through and then you'll have this big build up and it's a couple chapters of oh my god what is going on and then it's slow and it slows down so that it didn't bother me as much but it made my reading a little bit slower which is fine it did I mean it's an 800 page book it's gonna take you some time to get through this but I didn't mind the slow moments. Normally, I don't like a super, super slow pace. But I didn't mind the slow moments in this. So, And the other con that I had... My cons aren't really cons in this book. Is that there's, it's hard to understand. The world is so big and the magic system is so detailed that... There were a lot of moments where I had to go back and like reread passages because I'm like, wait, what just happened? Or trying to wrap my head around something in their magic system or in their world. But it's a 14 book epic fantasy. So I'm sure we don't learn everything in the first book. And it was, it's meant to still be kind of confusing after the first book because I'm still confused about a lot of this world but I still want more because it's like okay well I understand this and I understand that and what is going on so yeah it can be difficult to understand and the pacing's a little off but other than that those are my only cons of this book my pros are that the magic system is amazing it's detailed and I don't even fully understand it but it is detailed and you can tell that Robert Jordan put so much thought into this and so much forethought into creating this world and this magic system that it's just it's what legends are made of there is a reason that this book has withstood the test of time that people are still talking about it 30 years later that they're making a TV show like this book it's great my other pro is the characters. You fall in love with them. Some of them you love to hate. Some of them you, you just feel for them. Like the three boys, Rand, Matt, and Perrin, I adore. Moraine, I really, really like. Lan, I didn't expect to like, and I do. I loved him. Nynaeve, we had some issues. But I like her because of the way she was written. Like, you're kind of supposed to not be like, mm, I don't know how I feel about her. But, like, the, the characters are so well-developed. And I love a well-developed character. I can't stand going into a book and, like, the characters just being, like, super bland and super, like, you don't have a lot of description about them. And you definitely get description. Robert Jordan loved his descriptions <laughs> so that's gonna be the end of my uh spoiler free chit chat so if you have not read it don't want spoilers click off now i've got a bunch of other videos go check those out 
But now we're just gonna kind of get into my thoughts and my feelings about this because I just want to chit chat about it and I want to talk in spoilers and I just want to talk about mainly the characters starting with Rand which sadly he might be one of my least favorites so far and I feel like he's like the the main character because at the end of the book they literally said that he's like the dragon reborn so obviously he's a big deal he's a man that can channel um, the male side of the true source, which is like their power, but he doesn't really want to be that, which I love. I love a reluctant hero, but man, he is just not my favorite. I want him to be, and I'm sure he'll grow into his own, but I want, he is probably my least favorite of the boys right now, but I do really, really enjoy him. And I love his struggle to be like, no, you know, my dad is my dad. I am an Edmonds fielder. Like, even though I look different, I am from there. He is my real dad. And I want to know more. Like, that's the story I want to get. I want to know who he is, where he's from, where his dad found him, because he is not his dad's son, and I want more. And then we have Matt who I have a very love-hate relationship with Matt because he's stupid. But he knows it. And he kind of makes me mad because he's so smart and so sweet and he seems like he will do absolutely anything for Rand and his other friends. But, oh, he stole that dagger and didn't tell anybody. And, I mean... Serious Lord of the Ring vibes, the one ring, the corruption, like this dagger is like corrupting his soul and like you can't get rid of it yet because it's too far gone. Like Matt, I really hope we get this figured out and that he is not an idiot the whole time because, oh, that made me so mad when you're like, oh, he's like, oh, I have this ruby dagger and Rand's like, the fuck, bro? Like you didn't tell us. You had it, and Moraine is not happy when she finds out, and I mean, they're basically like, she's like, I ask if you, if, you know, he gave you anything, and he was like, well, he didn't give it to me, I stole it, like, please. And then we have Perrin, poor, precious Perrin, who is my favorite. I... He wasn't my favorite at first, but oh my god, it's like when they got separated and it was him and Egwene and they were with Elias and the wolves and then they met up with the traveling folk and <sighs> that might have been some of my favorite parts were finding out that he has this ability to speak to wolves and seeing him kind of accept it and become more wolf-like himself and like take on those mannerisms and then when they when they reunite with the rest of the group like everyone knows he's changed but like only Moraine and Lan like really know his secret about the wolves like no one else is aware that he can speak to wolves but they keep comparing him to a wolf like his eyes are yellowing and he's more stoic and they'll like describe him growling or just his calmness of presence and I just, I love it, and I want more of that. And can we just take a moment of silence for Hopper? Because that broke my heart. Like, when they killed Hopper and, like, the wolf, and Perrin could feel it, and then he went, like, went berserk and, like, killed White Cloaks, like, that got me. That was my feels. Something serious. I also really liked Maureen. I just want to talk about her for a minute because she's Gandalf. Like, she is the Gandalf of this story. And she feels like she really wants to, I think she really wants to help these boys. And I think I can't wait to see more of her and how powerful she really is because she's just a fun, I don't know about fun, but she's just a good character. I like how she tells the truth, 
but she, it, like she doesn't lie, but she also speaks in partial truths to avoid giving away too much information to the boys. So that's something that I found. Like I really, really enjoyed. And then there's Lan. Lan, who is her warder. I loved finding out that he was like an actual crownless king and that whole story with him about how he was taken out of his kingdom and taken to safety, trained from infancy to be, you know, a fierce warrior and then he went with the Aes Sedai and he became, you know, a warder. I love that and I love how at the end like you see all these people are like if you would raise your banners once more we would all fight with you and you would unite us and he's really against his birthright and being like a king and he's just very he's kind of self-deprecating in that way like he thinks he's not good enough I guess because there's the moments of him saying like you know he is without anything and that he has no land and he he's you know a king with no kingdom and I want to see how, where this goes in the end because I feel like it's a lot of foreshadowing that he will you know rise and be a king again so I'm kind of excited to see where that goes I could be completely wrong but then there was the thing with him and Nynaeve and I liked her I loved her bickering with Moraine. Like, she did not like the Aes Sedai. And Moraine's basically like, well, you can channel the power. Like, you can be an Aes Sedai, too. And she's, like, so against that. But then she's like, well, maybe. Maybe I'll learn. Whatever. Maybe I'll learn. But not from her. So, <laughs> But then that scene in the woods where she's, like, professing her love for Lan, that took me... Uh, caught me off guard. I was like, what? Like, I didn't see that coming, but I kind of really enjoyed it. Like, it, di it didn't feel insta-lovey, and I'm, I wasn't expecting it. It was so out of left field for me, and I was like, oh, okay. She loves Lan, and he loves her, but they can't be together, and Y'all, I want to see where that goes, too. That's another thing that I'm like, I need to continue on. I need to see where this goes. And then Egwene annoys me. <laughs> she is annoying with how much she loves Rand and then goes off, like, and has this fling with the traveling boy. And then Rand is like, I talked to a girl, and she's like, so defensive and then parents like um you spent all this time dancing with the traveling boy what about that and she's just like like shocked that that would be brought up like I don't know there's something about Egwene that I just am not sure about like she seems very selfish and kind of petty and maybe it's because she's supposed to be young I don't know we'll see where she goes I love the whole idea of like her and Rand not being meant for each other because that's what men have said that can see I guess visions or she can see magic or something along the like she can see the future but not really the future like she I don't know how it is like like I said the magic system is like really confusing but I still love it so they're not meant to be together but they want to be together but they can't be together the way they're meant to be and I know they're not going to end up together. I don't know who she's going to end up with. I don't think Rand is going to end up with anybody. I think he's going to have maybe another love interest, but I don't know if he'll end up with anybody. Maybe he'll die at the very end. Like, maybe he'll sacrifice himself as the dragon reborn. I don't know. We're just talking in theory now. But finally, the final character I want to talk about in my spoilery gush is Tom. I love the Gleeman. Like, he can't be dead, right? Like, he's not really dead because he has to come back. And I know he it, it would be glorious if he just, like, sacrificed himself for the boys, but I think he'll be back because his death was too, like, off-page to be the actual death of a main character. So we didn't really see him die, so I don't think he's dead. And there's, like, mentions in the book, like, 
of him being like, oh, we don't think he's really dead because Tom's a lot tougher than you think he is. So I don't think the Gleeman's dead. I think he has so much more to offer. I think there's going to be more story with the queen and her kids and her eye said I. I'm just excited. Like there's so much that happened in this book that I'm just like all over the place. And I love it. And I can't wait to read The Great Hunt as soon as it gets here. So let me know. Have you read Eye of the World? What do you think about it? Am I, what do you think of my predictions? Am I totally off base with a lot of my predictions? Or am I like a little right on? What do you think? Let me know. Thanks for hanging out with me for a little while. Yeah.